Hello, welcome to another Comic Tropes live stream. Uh, today I will be doing another Inktober drawing, and the prompt today was swing, which is uh, pretty broad if you apply it as a verb. Pretty broad, uh, and I'm glad for that um, because I realized that I owe somebody a commission, so I've decided to sort of combine things. Um, I'm going to go as far as I can today. Uh, I'm drawing Alice from Resident Evil uh, swinging some uh, either swords or knives. I'm really not 100% sure what to call them, um, but um, I'm still sort of fleshing it out. But mostly I was able to um, get this uh, sketch locked in during my lunch break today, which was awesome. Um, so felt like that was time well spent and um, anyway so that's what I'm doing today and I'm happy to entertain any questions that you may have when you jump in uh, a lot of people know the drill so let's see hello to James Stewart hello Paul crew hello David Mosquito thank you so much gentlemen for uh, joining me that that's really kind of you so just sort of working a little bit on uh, where I'm going with the, this drawing, and then I will be able to, uh, I can ink this really soon. I was just uh, checking on a couple elements, making sure that they lined up with my, with my idea. But I think we're in pretty good shape here. Chose this version of uh, Alice since uh, the, the requester didn't specify anything specific and um, I liked how the Alice in um, the third film Extinction just had like a lot of layers and I believe in real life it was to cover the fact that Mila Jovovich was uh, pregnant at the time but I still thought it was a cool look overall hello Goku Gardley nice to meet you I'm going to start with uh, some of the stuff that's like right up front. And let me just uh, make sure that this is a working brush. I think that this is going to be good. I'm going to move my whole arm here and hope for the best. And uh, here I go. That was a pretty good line. And now, a second. Uh, sorry this is so late, Sigmigs. I, I really wish I could be do doing live streams earlier for everybody, um, but I'm really beholden to my work schedule as the first thing, and uh, this is primarily um, a challenge for myself. If I have viewers that are willing to chat with me, fantastic. Makes me feel less alone, but um, ultimately, you know, I, I have to do this no matter what, so... Uh, yeah, just uh, doing the best I can. Wish I could get on earlier. Um, just wasn't a possibility today. Let's see, some questions. Um, who's the Mac joins us? Uh, thank you very much for watching. Um, Mitchell says, long time watcher, first time I've been here live. Well, welcome, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Channel Siskart says, you have to make time for your art no matter what. Well, that's true. Uh, let's see, Care Bear Comics says, I've only seen the first two Resident Evil movies. They never really resonated with me and the games aren't my sort of thing. This is a commission. I think that the movies, like, I think two or three of them are okay. I like the first one. I like the fourth one. And I guess I just sort of sat through the rest, to be honest. But, uh, yeah. I had, uh, supported a friend's, uh, 
crowdfunding campaign a while back. Um, he had fallen on some tough times, and uh, I agreed to do some commissions and uh, realized recently that I'd, I'd forgotten one. So uh, that's what I'm doing tonight is uh, doing a forgotten commission. Uh, have I ever played any of the games? I've played several of them. I've played the... Uh, I played a remix of the first one um, when it came to the GameCube. Um, I've played Resident Evil 2 when it was new. I played... I tried to play Resident Evil 3, but I was pretty bad at it. I think that was Nemesis. Um, Code Veronica I remember playing on the Dreamcast. Um, what else did I play? Um, I know I played games 4, 5, 6. Um, did they come out with 7? Whichever the one was that recently came out, recently, like a couple years ago now, on the uh, PS4, I got that one. <laughs> seven? Yeah, I think that they're up to seven. What's the theme? The theme is swing, so I'm just thinking this character's sort of swinging her, her swords, her knives, I don't know what to call them. She has very specific uh, curved bladed weapons in um, the third movie. Uh, I think they're called something like uh, I can't I can't think of how to pronounce it. It, it it's something with a K I did some minimal <laughs> minimal amount of research to be sure I was like you know that I understood what I was attempting to draw but I don't know like you know the origin of them or anything like that sorry sorry not sorry anyone can look this up slouching a little bit. I think that that's just because I'm tired and um, my fiance said I did a poor live stream last night that I was kind of tired and, and not very engaging and uh, uh, she's she's right. I was really tired last night and I don't think that the artwork was very strong but you know it happens. Um, I still committed to it. I did the best. Yeah seven was okay so seven was the most uh, recent one. Um which one was it? Uh, game six? You choose between two characters, Chris and Piers? That definitely messed up the SEO for my name. <laughs> Jeannie, what are you doing online so late? That's my sister on East Coast time. No, I sincerely appreciate the support. I appreciate you being here, but definitely never feel obligated. Um, I know how late it is. And... Uh, yeah, but it's it's nice to have you. Whoa, Beta Ray Bingus, thank you. Hello, Chris and fellow trope believers. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, this is Alice from Resident Evil. Yes, James. Jack Jones says loves Resident Evil. Yeah, I, I definitely have enjoyed many of the games. Um, th there's two or three that I, I wasn't able to beat, like Resident Evil 3 and Code Veronica I don't think I completed. Um, just, just a little too hard, I guess. Uh, Games these days, like, you can always beat a game as long as you have time, it seems. The, 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 the overall difficulty level in games has um, kind of gone down over the years, you know? When I was a kid, um, we had things that, like, you, you basically couldn't ever truly beat. Uh, you could just sort of keep playing them until they uh, you hit, like, a max high score or ran out of memory or something. Beta Ray Bill was my favorite episode of the Avengers Assemble cartoon. Very cool. Uh, Twiggy wanted to watch. Oh, hi, Twiggy. <laughs> Twiggy is one of my sister's dogs. I don't think she really wanted to watch. I think that my sister's just being nice. But you never know. Maybe the dog wanted to watch me.
this has got a lot of different sort of details when it overlaps like this and uh, for me that's going to just be a lot of fun I like getting lost in the details. So this is Alice from the Road Warrior remake of the franchise. Basically, yeah. Uh, hello, Aldi. Mobius says, doing anything this Halloween? Probably working. Um, but I should be home by the evening. Um, I live in a new neighborhood this year, so um, I'm not sure how many kids to expect as trick-or-treaters. So I kind of got a ridiculous n amount of uh, candy, uh, just in case. And if it uh, doesn't all get eaten by trick-or-treaters, I figure I can just take it into work and be a hero there. Hello, Rishi Sharma. Seeing a lot of uh, the same names uh, pop up. It's really I really appreciate that you guys are uh, coming in so many times. That's really nice. Uh, Mobius says, go, I'm going to go to Trolloween in Fremont with my friends. Oh, I didn't know that that was, a, that's obviously fairly local to me. I live in this area as well. So, uh, what, that's like, uh, near the, uh, the Troll Bridge, I guess. I, I've never heard of Trolloween, but, uh, I can sort of guess the idea. Halloween is a lot of fun. Halloween is awesome. Halloween is awesome. Halloween seems to be growing in popularity, in my opinion. I, I'm not sure if everybody agrees, but I feel like it's growing. The only reason I'm sort of getting quiet right now is focusing on uh, details, um, and uh, I'll be right with everybody. Just every once in a while, uh, sort of get lost in fine details, and I know I can get kind of quiet. They want to change the date of Halloween there a little while ago. Oh, I don't know anything about that role. Let's see. Uh, just under the bridge, they do a show and throw a party afterwards. Oh, cool. Trolloween. Wasn't Halloween always a big thing? No, not really. Not really. Um, didn't I write, do an episode where I talk about some of the... Yeah, if you watch my episode on um, cosplay, I talk briefly about some aspects of uh, the beginning of Halloween as it exists today. A short version of it is that, like, you know... Throughout the Depression, you know, Halloween was starting to get to be a bigger event, but mostly it was trick-based. Uh, it was a lot of, there was a lot of unemployed youth. They didn't have much to do, and Halloween was a big excuse for them to, uh, to do like, prank, they'd call them pranks, but it was definitely sort of vandalism and destruction of property. And so a lot of people sort of pushed for Halloween to become more kid and family friendly and that you would give out like treats which eventually became candy um so it's a big deal i mean as a holiday it has existed amongst pagan religions going way way back but it isn't what it is today it, it isn't quite the same it, it definitely evolved and took a big turn all things considered like pretty pretty drastically in like you know 50 60 years ago maybe a little more now but yeah Mobius says, uh, I'm going to be some character from the Teen Titans cartoon. That's fun. Um, Aldi says, I remember your Inktober live streams a few years back with like three people watching. Yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, it's nice to have a few more people. Last year was definitely actually uh, pretty successful. And uh, I had some uh, I had some pretty big, uh, what do you call them, um, super chats, which really made me realize that the channel was growing and like that there was some potential in, in having these and that's always like a reward a treat to get stuff like that um but uh it, it's uh it's fun no matter what to sort of 
have an audience while you try to uh, draw and, and improve. My household does candyless treats. Huh. Will I carve a jack-o'-lantern? If I have time, I'd love to. I enjoy um, doing that. Um, it sort of depends on how much time I have as to like how detailed my pumpkin will be. If I have no time... There might not be even be a pumpkin. If I have a little time, I'll carve sort of a traditional smiling face, something along those lines. If I've got more time, then I'll try to be creative with like, you know, etching something a little bit. And uh, But I haven't had that kind of time in a long time. So it might just be a, a smiley pumpkin face just to make the place feel sort of more friendly. Because I do enjoy making kids happy by just giving out candy it's, it's, a, it's a treat uh halloween is your favorite halloween is really fun i i never got to go to one of your big um costume parties gene i'm, I'm sorry about that like you know it, it always seemed like fun it's just we live so far away but i know you've put together some really awesome uh halloween events and you always put together like a really amazing costume i'm just going to tell you that right now you do I enjoy Halloween quite a bit. In in some ways, I, I'm starting to enjoy it more than Christmas because you can sort of still define the holiday a little bit how you want. It's not like everything's set in stone with like a bunch of traditions. Like there is the tradition of dressing up. There's the tradition of, you know getting candy but like what you dress up as and like how late you're going to be out whether you go to a party whether you stay home and like give stuff to kids i don't know there's lots of little ways you can do variety there how did i come up with the idea of infotron oh um i've always been very amused at the idea of um sort of 50s era uh robots if you go back and read golden age comics uh, you know a lot of superman but also like, you know, all the sort of different anthologies they made from basically the 30s through the 50s. Um, they would just have like really boxy robots that all talked very similarly. Like, you know, it was very, I don't know, it was just funny how derivative they all were of each other. Something close to that. And uh, um, I, I'm always amused at like sort of stereotypical 50s robots. So I just wanted to like have like, you know, a box body and then like sort of tubular uh, areas. Um, it was a fun costume to, to build. Let's see, thoughts about what's going on in China, the NBA and all the censorship this past week. Uh, yeah, there, well, that's a, that's a lot of deep topics. Um, uh, I definitely feel for Hong Kong. That's a place I visited uh, three times. I have several friends that live there, and, um, you know, definitely uh, concerning what is going on with uh, the Chinese government and, and how they sort of treat their citizens right now. Um, it's, it's honestly too much to get into on just a live stream. Um, NBA, I have to admit, I don't follow basketball very closely. I might tune in towards the end of the season if the Celtics are in there. That's about it. Just being a guy from Boston. It's, but I don't really follow the season all, all year long, so I'm not aware of like you know any drama that's going on uh, in the NBA. Sorry. American companies, including NBA teams, are censoring people speaking out against the Chinese government. Oh, I didn't know about that. Really? 
Oh, wow. I haven't seen the photo in a long time for reference, but my mom made me one of those cardboard box robot costumes when I was a child. Yeah, I had one too. My mom made me a cardboard box robot costume when I was in a, a kindergarten. Or actually nursery school, even earlier. Yeah. A lot of globalists are in bed with China. Yep. We're speaking out in support of the Hong Kong protesters that are protesting to keep their freedom from China. And I think that you want to have... Um, uh, Hong Kong remain as independent as possible. That is a major hub of uh, capitalist. Uh, uh, what would I say? Like the marketplace. I don't. I don't know what to say. It's um. It it's really important to keep it as separate and independent as possible. Um, it evolved to be a massive commerce hub, and it needs to remain that way. And it's already a really tough city to live in if you don't have much money. And uh, I don't know. It would be a shame to see uh, Hong Kong devolve and, and get worse. Hello, Atomicus. All right, let's let's be bold here and keep going with this. Boop. And I need another eye. Cat's not meowing tonight. Must be uh, that I fed her uh, properly. Let's say um, hello to John Mills. Um, Cara Bear says, or oh, she's bugging Chrissy. Oh, I missed something. Sorry. Don't know what I missed. Are the Resident Evil movies any good? They're okay. They're not great. The first one's pretty fun. Um, the fourth one I happen to like. The others are whatever. But your mileage could easily vary. Um... They're pretty ridiculous. I'll, I'll just to be clear, they're pretty ridiculous and like kind of, as compared to being like pure horror, they they frequently sort of devolve into schlocky B movie action. So, you know, it depends on how you like your sort of monster horror. I can't even really remember the final one too much, which sort of wrapped everything up I can I can really not remember that much although it like it had something to do with like a bunch of clones by then oh chibi what about yeah chibi chibi's chibi's uh no she's not bugging Chrissy Chrissy's upstairs and I keep um I keep these guys downstairs because uh, my cat upstairs and my two cats downstairs don't really get along too well so we keep them on different levels of the house do you believe in ghosts or ever had anything happen to you that you couldn't explain? I've had stuff happen to me that I couldn't explain, but I, I'm a pretty skeptical person. Now, I like the idea of, like, the ghosts and Supernatural for, like, you know, storytelling. But, like, do I believe in ghosts? Like, personally, no, I don't. Um, if they exist, they're so inconsequential as to not matter because they don't do anything of significance in my opinion, like, you know, no one can record them or interact with them reliably. Um, I, I don't, I don't believe in ghosts, but have I had stuff that I can't explain happen to me? Yeah, and it makes you question things. It does. Um, I, I can remember two different things. One was Chrissy and I were driving out to um, a wedding in Kentucky. Uh, Tony Moore, artist, uh, co-creator of, like, Walking Dead. And it was night, and we're out in the middle of nowhere, and we both saw a light in the sky. And, and we're, like, asking each other, hey, what is that? Like, is that an airplane? Or is that, like, a comet? Or is that a star? Because it seemed to be moving. So eventually, like, you know, because it was sort of, like, moving 
in a way that like didn't make sense to us and we eventually like just pulled the car over on the on the sort of highway no other like you know traffic it was not a highway it was more of just like a, a route you know and then the light started getting closer and closer and then it turned at an angle and started getting distant it just it didn't like rotate it like literally was going like sort of towards us and then it like took off like a different direction it changed a hard angle and we're sitting there going like you're seeing this right and we're like trying to figure out we're like so what is that like some sort of like well like it can't be a balloon because there's not really any light pollution we weren't near the city we were driving through um really empty fields like just flat fields and we're like so where would the light be coming from that's reflecting off of like a balloon that could be caught in the wind or something no it seemed like it was a big sizable object it wasn't making any sounds and it was moving all sorts of different directions and then like quickly disappeared sounds like a small drone maybe but it was it seemed much bigger like further away um high in the sky it seemed that way but it's hard to get perspective at, at night i'm just saying i couldn't explain it and this would have been like what 2008 or something like that so like handheld drones weren't really that popular back then a ghost yeah it's just you guys like all have like guesses and I guess the trick is that it, it's very hard to describe exactly what we saw. It, What it looked like was the light you'd see from an airplane or a helicopter, but it was like moving very quickly and it could change direction at like, not like slow down and change, but like without changing speed, it could like alter its trajectory. Very confusing. Um, so that's something I can't explain anyway, all right? I mean, yeah, it could easily be like you guys are saying maybe it's a drone maybe it's this maybe it's that it's really hard to say what it was but it was it was something right i just can't explain it nothing nothing quite seems to match up with what my experience was i don't believe in like you know aliens visiting us but um it was a tough one to explain another one that was weird it was a haunted drone exactly it was a drone but it was haunted um Another one that's like not not really as weird, but to me it felt weird, was shortly after my um, grandfather had passed away um, on my dad's side, I had a dream that he came to visit me, but I was also aware that I was dreaming. I frequently have lucid dreams where I'm like aware that I'm dreaming and I can control them. And he said, hey, Chris, you know, I came to visit you and, and say goodbye. And I go, oh, you know, Grandpa, I just, I wish this was real. That's all. Like, but I know I'm dreaming. I know I'm dreaming. So, it, like, you know, I just wish it was real. It would be really nice to, to be able to say goodbye to you. As, as realistic as that. And he goes, y you know, it is a dream, but I'm really talking to you. <laughs> and I go, oh, like, how could I... How could I believe you though? Like that there's no way to like confirm whether I'm dreaming or if you really are visiting me somehow. And he goes, I'll tell you something I never told you while I was alive. And I go, perfect, you know, give me some new knowledge if I wake up and uh, and I can like ask my father. And I forget exactly what he, what he told me now because this is going back a long time now. But it was something along the lines of, um, Jeez, it's really hard to remember. Something like, my father had a brother. In other words, like, my grandfather had an uncle. I don't know if that was exactly it, but it was definitely something like he mentioned a specific, like, family relation that I had never heard of. I'm positive I'd never heard of it. I, I, I truly believe that. So this is probably a coincidence, but I remembered the dream when I woke up, and I called my dad, and I was like, you know, did Grandpa have an uncle? You know, and, it, and my dad was like, yeah, actually he did. He did. Um, and, you know, he was gone, I guess, you know, before I was ever born. So, like, you know, no one ever really mentioned it. And I was like, boy, that is, uh, that is weird. And it's probably a coincidence. It's probably just my mind generating a form of closure 
and it was a coincidence maybe maybe as a real little kid I'd heard that and I somehow in my subconscious remembered that I had like a great uncle but I don't actively remember that you know that's all I can say is it felt weird so you'd asked had I ever experienced anything weird uh, yeah I've, I've got like you know experiences that I can't explain but I am skeptical so I don't really believe anything happened it's just you know you can't explain it my lucid dreams always whisper of secret tangible knowledge that'll benefit me when I'm awake it's all lies yeah Kara Bear says I hardly ever remember my dreams I didn't know that well Gene I might be remembering the exact family relationship incorrectly um, and I was living down in Virginia at the time so we probably just didn't talk about that particular dream um, but I talked with dad about it dad may not remember because who cares about other people's dreams generally but that was a that was a dream I had um, it felt very real but your dreams can sometimes be very emotional I think that your dreams you know uh, are there to give you sort of emotional releases like if you haven't felt uh, anger in a long time or something and maybe for some reason we need to I don't know like you know you, your mind can make you feel sort of like angry in a dream let me figure this out here My mom has great stories about dreams, she said. Yeah, I know you made my story, Jean. I, I, it, sorry if I never told you. It's, it's not that interesting, you know, because I don't really... It was just a dream. But I happen to remember it. I don't remember every dream. Um, I can go... Th In fact, like, I'm on medication for depression. I've talked before about how I have severe depression. Um, my medication prevents me from remembering um, a lot of my dreams. Um, has for years so it's a little frustrating um, it, it, it it's I wish I, I I do have dreams but I don't remember them as well as well let's see grandma talked to me when I went to a psychic once I didn't know you went to a psychic my sister and I are learning all sorts of stuff about each other the rest of you can just listen in on family drama when did you go to a Psychic. How much did you spend? That's silly. <laughs> I'm just kidding around. No drama here. I know, I'm just kidding around. Anger is not useful than despair. Okay. Any tips for battling depression? Yeah, I've got some tools. Um, I mean, personally, medication does help. I'll, I'll definitely say that. Um, but that's going to always be up to like you and your doctor to figure out what you need. Um, after that, like uh, uh, exercise socializing sunlight and uh, uh, just keeping busy keeping it um, active with like things like work and personal projects uh, I've mentioned before that one of the things I did to fight depression was I had gotten laid off from a job I really liked so I um, I started up comic tropes um, and I'm really glad that I did it's definitely helped keep me busy and keep me a little a little better than otherwise you should go on a spirit quest yeah do you realize that resident evil is the only successful franchise 
that was based on a video game. You mean movie franchise that was based on um, a video game? Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, it is. For battling depression, there is a new Electroshock product on the market. Oh, Jesus. I, I don't think I want to try that. Haven't seen that commercial. Um, I like unintentionally funny commercials. I'll keep my eye out for it on YouTube later. Let's say Super Mario Brothers would disagree. Because that was only one movie, though. And it didn't do that well. Resident Evil did produce seven movies. That's successful. Exercise is key. It is. Um, I'm not getting great exercise these days, but I'm starting to eat better, and that is making a difference for me. What other questions are there? Let's see. It's been too warm where I live and doesn't feel like October. Oh, yeah, I know. Uh, New York was quite warm. It's uh, gotten cold here, though. What's my favorite food? Steak. Do you, do you need three movies to be a franchise? I think so. I don't think two is enough. Angry, Angry Birds movies did all right. Wasn't there only one so far? I don't think we've seen the results of the second one yet. She does look like Mara Jade. Um, yeah, okay, I can sort of see that, yeah. Um. Hmm. That's a character I haven't thought about in forever. She, she was just, uh, what, she was like Luke Skywalker's wife in those old uh, novels from like the 90s? I, I read those at the time. I don't think any of them are canon anymore, though, so I, I think she's, uh, she's gone. I liked those novels at the time because I was like, hey, this is pretty good Star Wars. We hadn't had really good Star Wars in a long, long time when I was a kid. Uh, then those novels came out in, like, the 90s, and it was exci an exciting time. But, um, I think I do prefer the, uh, the interpretation of Luke from, um, Last Jedi. Maybe that's controversial, but I really like Last Jedi. Hey, kitty. If she was in Star Wars movies, that'd be pretty dope. I don't think Mara Jade will show back up in a movie. I doubt it. I'll say that she's got a lot of fans out there, though. Wow, very cool. All other video game movies I can think of only have two. Yeah, I think they made two different Silent Hill movies that weren't really even connected. What else did they make? Like, there's gonna be a second Angry Birds movie. What other video games had, like, you know, more than even one movie? There was Devil Dragon. There were two Mortal Kombat movies. There are CGI Resident Evil movies. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking more, more about, like, the... Uh, Live action theatrically released. Oh, Tomb Raider had two. That's right. Hitman had two. Did he? Wow. Pokemon's had one. It'll probably get another. Street Fighter. I think Street Fighter only had the one live action movie.
It's fun to think about those though, like like which uh, video games have like even tried to have a movie, but um, most of them just don't have a good story. Uh, I haven't read Crossed, Rishi. Um, maybe someday I should get to that. Final Fantasy has had a few movies, but they aren't related to each other. Yeah, I mean, that could be a franchise, but... Yeah. Does the animated G.I. Joe film count as a movie? Uh, yeah, but it didn't get released in a theater, so I... You know, and it's not based on a video game. G.I. Joe is based on a toy line, so... Kind of different. What else can I do here? So I can focus up on this leg. Doom just had a new movie. Did it really? Did it really? Wow. Huh. Tomb Raider had three? Oh, that's right. There were two Angelina Jolie movies plus the reboot. I didn't see the two Angelina Jolie movies. Yeah, I tried the last Tomb Raider for some reason. I forget why. Maybe I had a free ticket or something. I, it wasn't... I can barely even remember it, to be honest. It's like... It was just boring. It was kind of boring. I'm going to go ahead and fill these lips in in black. See what that looks like. And it's just the top. I'm going to go ahead and fill in the bottom. I hope it works. For animated, Castlevania is the best. Metal Gear Solid could work great as a movie. Yeah, they've got some interesting characters. Wing Commander. Oh, that was that was terrible, terrible. Do you ever color, and if so, would you consider doing it on a live stream? I have colored on a live stream. Um, yeah, I love using um, like Copic markers. Um, so that's definitely a thing that I do. And in fact, I was thinking of coloring this one in um, different shades of gray. Uh, that's definitely something I, I really enjoy doing and have done on many of my live art streams. It all depends on how much time I have. Um, but I have a good amount of time tonight, so I'm giving some serious thought to uh, to that. We'll see, like you know, if I can get some more details in here, and then. Um, like, yeah, why not? Have you read the new Marvel canon Star Wars? I've read it a little bit of it. I read the stuff that um, John Cassidy illustrated, um, but I didn't keep up with it. I'll have to uh, jump back in sometime. 
because I, uh, I I like Star Wars. I also read a few other of like their like um, spin-off things, but I can't remember each one. Like I read a little Darth Vader. I don't know what else. It's been a while. It's been a while. I know what's always fun. Um, give me a character, and I will do a flawless impression of that character. Go for it. There's nobody I can't do. I'm a flawless impressionist. Flawless. Literally nothing can stump me. Anybody? Dr. Doom. All right. <clears throat> hey, Dr. Doom. All right, what else? Han Solo. Uh, mm, Joey, I'm going to need some more uh, green jelly beans to stay up for a Kessel run. Perfect. Wolverine. Uh, I'm the best there is of what I do. Uh, I'm a monster. Perfect. Let's hear your Sam Elliott. Sam Elliott here, and uh, I recommend buying yourself a horse. <clears throat> Give me a minute here. I'm going to loosen up and get into it. That wasn't good. Sam Elliott here. Loose. Sam. Sam Elliott here. Loosen up and buy yourself a horse. Perfect. Okay, just. Yeah, that was good. Uh, Alice looks a bit Asian. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it's not perfect. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bust out my Copics to try to give myself some texture and, and flavor and such. Mark Wahlberg. You guys, I think we found a Transformer. I'll tell you something. With Ma's recipe, my money, and Donnie's also here, I think Wahlburgers is going to be a big hit. Gambit. Oh, Sal. Oh, oh, I'm Gambit. You see, oh, welcome down to uh, Crawfish Diner, Sal. This is Gambit, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, these are terrible. I hope you know I don't consider myself a good impressionist. I'm just having fun. Lest somebody think that I'm being serious. Heaven forbid. Heaven forbid. Wahlberg is by far the best. Well, I... I am from the Boston area, so I can I can pull out just enough of that to make it work. Hi, Bill. Rambo. Uh, let me ask you one thing. This time, if I go back, do I have permission to win the Vietnam War, Colonel Troutman? Yes, Rambo. I want you to win it this time. All right, then I'm I'm going back. I'm going back to Vietnam to win. Yo, Adrian. <laughs> Adrian. <laughs> I'm Rambo. Hey. I won the boxing championship. I'm Rambo. Yay. <laughs> Did I get that right? Uh, Toby Maguire, Spider Man. Oh gosh. Oh wow. I'm Toby. Toby Rific.
Um, Christopher Walken. You see, what you gotta do is do a decent impression, kid. I don't know. Uh, and Donald Trump, Donald Trump, this is my impression. <laughs> that was terrible. The last Rambo wasn't very good. The la oh, the last, I thought you were about to say my impression of Rambo. I was like, no shit, but, uh. You mean the, the movie? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've heard that that was not a, such a treat. Um, and I've seen all the other Rambo movies and, you know, more or less enjoyed them, but uh, um, I just skipped five. Uh, Gonzo. Hey, Kermit! Mind if I do my flying chicken act? <laughs> can't do it. Captain Graveman! I'm trying, folks. These are hard. What can I say? You, you got me. You, you found me out. I'm not an impressionist. I can't do most voices. I can't. Sometimes if I try, one will come to me. Hello, Starscream here. Megatron, do you mind if I... Suck your <laughs> robo dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm amusing myself. Hello, true believers. This is Stan Lee, and I'm here to give you a pulse pounding true believer excitement pass. You know, when I was a kid, we liked Spider Man. Uh, my impression of Chris Pierce. Oh, hi, Cubby. Played with Copic Markers. Speaking of Copics, let's talk about comics. Bill Cosby. Rudy, you see what you gotta do to do some inking? Theo, is get yourself a nice Copic Marker. Vanessa. Claire. Where did I put my inking pens? Theo! Starscream was a backstabber. Yeah. Well, I don't know what to say. Oh, you want to hear like a funny Starscream? Um, James Adomian is a really funny comedian that I like. He has a really great stand-up bit. Uh, you should listen to about how all 80s villains were just like all of them just <laughs> used their gay voice like that was the impression was you just did a voice of a gay guy and apparently that counted <coughs> as, a, as a super villain or a, or a villain of some sort and um, what I'm saying right now I'm not trying to really do his joke you need to listen to his joke it's really good all right, all right, all right, Matthew McConaughey. Uh, okay, Carl Urban's Judge Dredd. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> I am the law. Throw down your weapons and prepare to be judged. <laughs> Perfect, right? Um... Makes me think of a good one for an impression, Skeletor. Curse you, He-Man! You've ruined Christmas! Me! <laughs> that one's alright, right? That one's alright. Um, yeah, thank you very much for entertaining me, everyone. It's, uh, been perfectly ridiculous. I, I do believe I... I do declare that I have done some horrible impressions for the evening. But at least it helped us all pass the time. Grimlock. Me Grimlock like to draw with Copic markers. It sounded Mexican. <laughs> uh oh, nuts. <laughs> Johnny Rotten? I don't know how Johnny Rotten sounds, I'll be honest. Sorry. Robocop? 
Um, Dead or alive, you're coming with me. Oh, I wish I could make all of you do impressions now. Like, I want to hear everybody's Bane impression. Admit it. Like, right now, you're thinking of how to do that right now. You were merely, you merely adopted the duck. I was born in it. I was born in it. Oh, you have to cover your mouth to do a good Bane. That's a fun one to do. That's a fun one. I swear, after Heath Ledger's Joker, I was like, well, what villain are they going to be able to make in a Batman movie that, like, entertains me as much as that? And then Tom Hardy, damn, I thought he knocked it out of the park with his Bane. That was awesome. So, so weird and unique. I liked it. I liked it a lot. You merely adopted the dark. I was born in it. Such a beautiful voice. I'll wait till they get a load of me. I'm Jack Nicholson. Jack Nicholson. I don't know. I don't know. I can't do most of these guys. I can't. Hardy was the cool, but the film didn't approach Dark Knight. Dark Knight was the best, in my opinion, but I like Dark Knight Rises as a, a conclusion to a trilogy, giving Batman sort of a definitive ending. I, I like that quite a bit. It worked for me. I can understand why it might not for everybody. It's not quite the Batman that we get in the comics, but I liked it. It was about a guy that, like, would really give everything of himself to protect the city by the end. And yet, he found a way to sort of realize he could step away, that he'd done his part. I don't know, I liked it. It worked for me. For the rest of tonight, we'll be talking like Bane. If I started attacking Marvel, my channel would blow up. Yeah, I bet you're right that if I went negative, that my channel would blow up. But you know what? I have no interest in doing that. No interest. I yeah, that would I would get bored of that so fast. It just just holds no interest to me to to uh, like. And I'll give a harsh critique of something. That, like I'm not saying that. But, like, being constantly negative, like, looking for ways to be outraged by a comic, I would get burned out. I would get burned out real fast, and the channel would just disappear. So, uh, I've made a very conscious decision to um, focus on primarily comics that I appreciate an aspect of. Bane sounded like Sean Connery. Well, that maybe mine did. I... I 100% will cop to that. Oh, pushy. Have you guys ever seen my James Bond impression? Hi, James Bond. That's right. Did the same joke twice tonight. Um, you play it chill. I'd like to imagine I'd do it in that style. Let's see. If you don't like Marvel Comics, just don't read them. Yeah, I agree. Um, speak with your wallet. Um, or give a detailed critique of why you don't like something, and that's fair. But, um, to constantly... I think, you, uh, you know, nobody can be outraged forever. You know, like, even... A character like the angry video game nerd 
he isn't making like daily or weekly videos about being outraged by the video games and that's only a character let alone like you know real life nobody can be that outraged um, it just doesn't make sense like for your own mental health Besides which, uh, while I'm not reading that many comics, of the ones that I am, I'm reading things like Immortal Hulk and House of X Powers of Ten, and I love it. I love it. People are saying that Absolute Carnage is awesome. So Marvel's putting out plenty of stuff that, like, seems to be doing very well. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I don't know. I don't know what there is to be outraged about. Like, they're putting out some great comics that everyone should be able to enjoy. Have you read Agent Venom? Uh, yeah, well, I read uh, it when Rick Remender and Tony Moore created it. So, yeah, um, you know, Tony's a friend of mine, so I'm always curious what he gets up to. And, uh, well, I guess I'd call, personally, I'd, I'd say that Rick is a friend, too. I, I, I think he's fantastic. I I think he's, the like, one of the best writers out there right now. Um, so I'm biased, you know, but... Uh, but that doesn't mean I love everything they do, um, but like in general, I, I tend to respond very well to what they create, and that's part of why I like them. Um, hopefully that makes sense. You like what you like. Thinking th something through here. This, this stuff's fun. If I get quiet, it's just because I'm having fun sort of like, you know, filling in blank areas. It's like it's like getting to play with a coloring book, except you designed it yourself. So it's interesting. You, you know what areas you want to like sort of focus on. It's already sort of in your mind's eye. A lot of people saying that they like um, The Mortal Hulk. It's cool. I think it really is an exceptional title. I think that writer Al Ewing is going places. If you're wondering why I take off the caps to both ends when I'm only using one, it's because if you don't, um, a lot of times your um, Copic markers will will bleed. There's so, it, it, I don't know exactly what it is. Maybe something to do with like the air pressure or something like that. But um, yeah, you have to sort of like uh, uncap both ends so there's like not some sort of weird vacuum up effect, like just sucking the ink out. Do you like anything robot mecha related? Um, well, when I was a kid, I was really into Transformers. Like that was what even brought me into comics because I was just I found a Transformers comic. So, as a kid, I was into that. Um, when I was in my twenties, I got really um, into building those um, Gundam model kits. But um, when I moved out here about six years ago, I donated them all to Goodwill, so I don't have any of those anymore. But, um, you know, yeah, I, I, I like robots. 
beyond that, I can't think of anything specifically robot related that I enjoy, but I'm open to robot stuff. Going with the theme of horror and Halloween, do you like the hack slash comics? I haven't read those. I haven't read those. Um, I know what you're talking about, um, but I, I don't really um, have enough familiarity to make an informed opinion. I'm just thinking something through here. Gonna add another layer uh, to this darkness. Okay, some people saying they love Joker. I didn't care for it, folks. Sorry. Um, to me, and it wasn't really, um, it's not much of a comic book related opinion, so much as um, an opinion on, um, I also love film, and to me, it really just felt like a knockoff of movies like, specifically King of Comedy and also a little bit Taxi Driver. Um, so I was like, eh, I've, I've seen this before, you know, and I've seen it done a lot better. So it just didn't feel like anything new to me, um, having seen those movies. And uh, so it didn't really offer any surprises. I mean, especially since I knew that this character was the Joker. So, of course, he's going to end up being a murderer by the end. Like, that's not a surprise. So, I, I wasn't too into it. Um, but I've got a lot of friends that absolutely loved it. And, obviously, a bunch of you guys love it, too. So, you know, it's obviously resonating with some people. Uh, I can respect that. And I'm glad. I just, I didn't get anything out of it. I didn't like it at all. Yeah, the only thing I, like, if I was trying to give it, like, some credit, Austin, you're saying that, like, the Joker isn't very intelligent, charismatic, he's not even really that very tough. All I can think of is, when we meet him, he is on, like, um, medication. Maybe by the end, like, he's sort of become his true self by going off of his meds. Maybe that's what they're sort of hinting at. I, I don't know. Copics are great. It's a shame that they cost a kidney. Yeah, yeah. They, these are expensive. I wish that they weren't quite so much. I, I would love to have a lot more. Oh, I've got a question. What are some of your favorite crime comics? We talk about, we've been talking about horror a lot, but I'd, another genre that I really like that is um, 
not as popular as it used to be back in the day, but you know, it's definitely still a thing, is uh, crime comics. I'm curious, like, what are some of your favorite crime stories? It could be nonfiction, fiction, anything. Um, curious what folks' opinions are on, on, on crime comics. If you don't have an opinion, that's okay. Early Sin City. Criminal. Definitely criminal. Yeah. Julia, Adventures of a Criminologist? Huh. I don't know that one. Kill or Be Killed, 100 Bullets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why did the Joker want to be a comedian when he couldn't tell a joke? Well, I think that the idea was obviously, you know, he was... Uh, somewhere on the spectrum or mentally ill or both and he just didn't uh i think he just liked the idea of how he saw that like clowns and comedians were popular and that they would connect with the audience but he clearly had no idea how that worked i mean when he was writing down in his notebook like oh people like jokes about sex it was like that was the extent of his observations he, he like it was so surface level he 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 just didn't get why jokes worked or anything. He just liked the idea, I think, of being popular. Milo? That's my cat. What you meowing about, bud? You got food and water and, and me? What's the matter, pal? He just let out this big meow. I don't know what's that about. How's my buddy? just being a little quiet because my cat just like came up to me and clearly just sort of wanted a little bit of attention and he's walking under me right now and feeling very happy cute James says Chris published a comic book um, yeah I've published uh, several my most um, acclaimed one was doing a story in this anthology that uh, trickster which is all stories written by Native Americans and then like they would get to choose an artist that they would like to work with and I illustrated one there this is one I illustrated and this is a long time ago now but this was nominated for an Eisner so getting to do a, then like you know we've got different artists and stuff depending on the story but that was definitely like you know a privilege to be not, um, in a book like this. I think it was a great idea. It's got a lot of really interesting stories. If you have any interest in Native American culture, um, some really interesting stories.
What other questions are there? Um, hmm. Hmm. Fave music artist. Um, I think I've answered stuff like this before. Uh, I really like the Beastie Boys. Uh, it's probably my all-time favorite. Big fan of like Foo Fighters. And then I listen to still lots of stuff from the 80s and 90s when I was sort of growing up. Um, there's a lot of a lot of artists there. Lately, I've been listening to a decent amount of Elton John. I think it was that movie Rocket Man that just sort of like reminded me of how many songs of his I have and and that like like. So it just sort of reminded me, and I've been sort of on a kick listening to a fair amount of that lately. But I'm always also trying to dis to discover new stuff, like turning on Pandora and uh, just letting it suggest stuff to me. I really liked uh, Young the Giant a couple years ago. That was a nice discovery. Chibi. Wow, let's see. Austin Keezer says, Will you review Jawbreakers, God King, or Cyber Frog? No. <laughs> I don't think I will. Uh, first of all, I don't know really anything about either of them. Never say never. Never say never. But my understanding of the first one... I don't know who did Jawbreakers. I believe Cyberfrog is Ethan Van Skyver. I, I might be mispronouncing his name. Um, and uh, he seems like kind of a negative character. So I just don't want to like... I don't want to... You know what? I wouldn't want to review it because I don't want to, like, irritate his audience. He's already got his fans, um, so he doesn't really need the publicity, in my opinion. And so I don't think I'd want to um, uh, review something that can only lead to um, something negative. You know what I mean? Like, the, like I, could, I could only lose in that scenario. Um... Richard Meyer wrote Jawbreakers. I don't know who Richard Meyer is. That one I don't know. Ed Brubaker is definitely somebody that I will be covering at, um, at some point. I'm a huge fan of Ed Brubaker's work. So, yeah. The creator of Jawbreakers is a fan of yours. He says good things about you. He likes your content. I don't know. I, that, that's interesting to learn. I, I don't know him. He's never reached out to me. Um... That's interesting. But anyway, um, Richard Meyer is the guy suing Mark Wade. Why would you sue Mark Wade? I'll be honest, guys. Um, obviously, you're getting into a lot of like sort of comic book drama, and it is stuff that I just don't have a lot of interest in. So I don't tend to keep up with the news. Like I don't read the gossip on sites like Bleeding Cool, really, or anything like that. Um, and I intentionally, I've said this before, I intentionally don't watch other comic book related YouTube channels with one or two small exceptions because I don't want to cover the same material and risk having my opinion influence such that I'm sort of like either plagiarizing or repeating at least some of the same ideas in my reviews. So I very intentionally don't watch a, like uh, comic book related channels. I said small exceptions because um, I discovered cartoonist kayfabe early on because they were specifically uh, reviewing um, Wizard Magazine, which I thought was a completely different idea than how I approach comics. And I, and I still think that we do um, very different things. Um, so that is a comic book related channel um 
that and and one that I enjoy quite a bit is cartoonist kayfabe. I think that they have a really interesting um, angle. Um, so yeah. Let's see, I'm not mitching must Mitch. I'm stuttering. I'm not missing much by keeping up with the drama. It's it's a lot. I guess all I can like think of is setting aside the fact that maybe I have different politics and stuff than than, than some of these people um, and and I won't shy away from like expressing my politics but it doesn't come up too often the way I've decided to review or analyze more um, co comics I, I want to either talk about comic book history which is objective and just truths you know when i do an episode about the history of lettering or the history of distribution my goal is to be as impartial as possible um and then when i'm discussing a creator i'll let my opinions be known if i like something or don't but mostly i'm trying to analyze the techniques that are at play um because i think that no matter what that's something everybody can benefit from whether you're trying to be um, you know, a cartoonist or a writer yourself, I think you can benefit. And of course, if you're just um, interested in reading it, maybe I can find a new level for you to enjoy it on, or maybe I can recommend a, a, a related comic that you've never heard of, or at least hadn't made your mind up on checking out. So I try to do that. Will I ever do a trope about me or Jack Cole? Oh, it's Plastic Man. Uh, yes, definitely. Um, I have talked a little bit about Jack Cole in an episode I made um, that talks about um, the spirit and midnight and knockoff comic characters. So if you look at that one, I do discuss Jack Cole. Um, I, I admire Jack Cole. I think he was a very talented cartoonist. Um, he met a sad, tragic end, and that's, that's too bad. Um, and then, uh, on top of that, like, um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I would definitely consider talking about the stuff that he did with Plastic Man. And, um, but I've already sort of said what he did about the spirit. Because uh, he was basically the guy tasked with, he had to create a spirit knockoff, which was called, um, Midnight. It was basically the exact same character. Hello, Ray. Glad to, glad you got to jump in. Um, that's nice to see. Could you probably do a comic tropes about the feuds? Wait, what the feud? The feuds? What? I missed it. Darn it. Um, when am I going to cover Dr. Frederick Wortham? That's an interesting point. Um, he's definitely come up. I mean, you can't ignore it when you're talking about comic book history. He's come up several times when I've talked about um, the comics code, um, whenever I've sort of talked about that, or whenever you're just sort of talking about that era in the 50s where comic books really specifically became uh, just superheroes uh, at a certain point. Um, what about a movie review of Dark Dungeons? I probably shouldn't review Dark Dungeons in, in the sense that I did help crowdfund it. And on top of that, um, I went to an early test screening for them and gave opinions on some things that I would have liked to have seen them like do in editing and they sort of addressed it. So I feel like, I mean, I could, but I'd have to give a disclaimer. Just like when I talked about The Walking Dead or Invincible, I, I give disclaimers. Uh, you know, those are comics that I, I, I essentially did work on. So, you know, I've got opinions because I, I, I wasn't the direct creator and stuff, but I, I had a small, small, small role, but still a role. And, it, and in general, I, I probably don't want to talk too much about stuff that I, um, that I um, had a hand in in any way. I'll, I'll pimp myself and my friends and stuff. I'll, I'll go like, hey, this is something I recommend, and I'll just let you know I'm biased. This is why I'm telling you to do it. But, um, yeah. Let's see. 
there's a lot more I could be doing with this. Obviously, I'm sort of getting tired, so I was having more fun answering questions and stuff. But let me uh, do a few more things for uh, for this, and then I'm probably going to call it a night. Uh, it's been a long day. I worked my opening shift at, at work, and then I ended up having to stay like an extra two hours just so that I could complete a sale. That, that's just how my job works is... Uh, you stay as long as you need to to make the sale because that's how you make your money commission based so it can be tough sometimes c4 where's my c3 c2 c3 would you make a comic via kickstarter um i'd be open to the idea but there's a lot of steps i'd have to cross before i even got to that decision making point um First, I, I've written some comics that I would really like to um, do, but I'd like to hire, you know, an artist that's just right for the project. And I put that on hold for now because um, I don't really feel like I have the funds to um, to pay them. Uh, and it's very important to me to pay a talented artist, like you know, a good, really good industry rate. Um, that said, I am going to illustrate a page for a uh, friend's book that has already been successfully funded on Kickstarter, but if you want to jump in, it's still ongoing so that you could, like, you know, buy into the comic. It's, uh, called Death and Comics. Uh, it's by Randy Stone, Altruist Comics. Um, I mention it at the end of, um my Moon Knight episode. So, uh, I think that, like, you know, if you're, if you're curious, you know, you sort of have a pretty good idea of what m the level of my art is, but I'm going to be illustrating, um, a short story. I think it's just one page, so don't get overly excited, but, um, I will be illustrating a story in that, um, and I'd definitely be appreciative of anyone that, uh, supports it, and, uh, Beyond that, uh, you know, maybe someday uh, I will have a Kickstarter or something like that. But um, I'd keep it pretty modest, no matter what. Yeah, there's definitely some stories that would give me pleasure to see come into existence beyond just like you know the written word that I've created and and, and see if people uh, get some pleasure out of that. I I flatter myself by thinking that I've got some pretty good stories in the bank. I flatter myself. <laughs> Sam Keith. Yeah, I'll do Sam Keith at some point for sure. Um, there's a lot to say. In fact, um, while I was on my trip to New York and hanging out with my friend Evan, he pulled out uh, the um, Sam Keith uh, Batman Max comic book, and I uh, didn't completely reread it, but I did like you know flip through it slowly and 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 just sort of reminisced about that time. And uh, it's interesting. Sam Keith is such a unique creator. And he's really got a style that in, in many ways strikes me as more like belonging in something like Drawn in Quarterly or Fantagraphics or Top Shelf. You know, more of a, a small press vibe. Um, but it's interesting, he, you know, seeing his take on superheroes. So, But 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 he's also challenging to, to come up with, like, what do you say about that? I mean, beyond just like, wow, isn't this, like, you know, surprisingly beautiful? There, there's got to be more to say than that. I just... Um, I'm a little stumped as to exactly what I want to say about it. Oh, shoot. I missed up on a line. So, I'm just going to have to fill this in in black and put the whole thing in shadow. Darn it. That stinks. Darn. 
I love that She-Hulk is just in Hulk form all the time. I like that too. She, she, I, I like lawyer She-Hulk. I think it's interesting to just see this person that... It, it's such a contrast, isn't it? Like this super tall, muscular person who isn't generally like using that super strength. You know, like I, it's, it's funny. It's legit funny to see her as a lawyer like visually that that's that's great that works so well in comics So yeah, I don't think that I gate came up with the best overall like um, likeness of Mila Jovovich for this character. Uh, the only way you'd really know it's Alice is maybe by the way that I tried to draw the suit that she wore in a very specific movie. But I still am happy overall with the pose um, and some of the foreshortening, and I'm kind of happy with some of the texture and, and the coloring I'm doing. Uh, there's a few things I'd approach differently, and I like to try to be honest uh, about that too, what sticks out to me. Um, mainly the face. It just doesn't quite feel like the way I typically approach one, and uh, maybe a little too angular for me, for my, my, my work. Um, not like it's ugly per se, I don't quite think that about what I've just created. I just uh, would have approached it differently given a, a second chance. But it's been fun to like, you know, work on this one tonight. And we got to tell some interesting stories about like things that we believe and what we what some of our favorite comics are. I always like talking about that stuff with that. Alice from the Resident Evil movies. That that's what I was sort of going for. It was a um, a commission that I owed someone and uh, just figured I'd roll it into uh, what I'm doing here. Uh, my 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 logic is that she's swinging these bladed weapons. That's that's my logic my argument for why, what I'm doing tonight. Um, did I accomplish that? I don't know. Some of that's up to you guys. I'm excited to see what they'll do with She-Hulk on Disney+. Plus. I'm kind of looking forward to Disney+. Plus. I, I went ahead and ordered it. Um, I like Star Wars. I like the Marvel superheroes. I'm, I'm trying to be hopeful that that could be something cool. We shall see. We shall see. Getting close to wrapping up, but um, I'm really grateful that uh, so many of you uh, jumped in tonight. Um, thank you. Your uh, company is always appreciated. Always welcome. I think that that'll do it for now. Alice usually gets a light workout by killing dozens of zombies in every movie. Yeah. Ah... <sighs> Oh yeah, Ms. Marvel. Uh, that could be very interesting. What's tomorrow's prompt? You always remember to ask that, Care Bear. Let's see. Let's take a quick look at what we've got for tomorrow's Inktober prompt. All right. 
Tomorrow is pattern. Oh, okay. Patterns. Pattern's fairly broad. Uh, we've got number ten. Pattern. Uh, what what ideas strike you there? Um, if I stick with a horror theme, I definitely uh, the idea of uh, Pinhead comes to mind. He's got a pattern to his face. Um, but I think I've illustrated him um, in, like last year or something. So I'm not sure that that's uh, the way to go. Um, hmm. Decisions. 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 Putting back my uh, my markers now, but um, this was definitely a fun one. I'm very grateful. I think I said that already. Uh, Brian says he's doing Ragman. Care Bear suggests Crazy Quilt. Um, Freddy's sweater. Appreciate that, Gene. Thank you for staying the whole time. I hope you get enough sleep. Uh, Two Face. Yeah, that's there's sort of a pattern there. Um, do the spot from Spider Man. Oh, the spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Mr. Zaz. Blood splatter pattern. Yep, that's true. That's pretty broad. I could do that with, like, almost any anybody. Um, hmm. Well, you guys have lots of creative ideas. I hope several of you consider, uh, you know, it's not too late. You don't have to do every single day of Inktober. Um, if you want to just do one or do a few, I really encourage you to do it. Like, you know, I look at this and it's like, is this my best work? Not really. Um, I think I can do better if I sort of spend more time on pre-sketches and more time carefully choosing my inking decisions. But a big part of what I'm trying to do with Inktober, and I think it's good advice, is to um, see what you can do in about an hour. And this one was more like an hour and a half. I was having fun. Uh, you know, just sort of challenge yourself by seeing, like, you know, what, what comes out when you... Uh, when you just keep moving forward, you know, I'm, I'm basically not telling myself no to any decisions. I'm, I'm, I'm just illustrating um, and and just continuing. And a, that's a big part of why I'm doing it as a live stream, because I can't just sort of scrap something or start over. You know, I'm just like, I'm, I'm sort of, my feet are held to the fire. I'm keeping myself honest and just saying... Eh, okay, maybe I didn't like that decision. So what? Just just push forward. Finish it. Finish it. This is all about just finishing something and then um, seeing where it goes from there. Um, and, and I think in that regard, it, it's working pretty well as um, an exercise. Rorschach from The Watchmen. That's another good suggestion. Um, Sheldon, you, you, you didn't miss it, but I am wrapping up. Uh, everything up. I'm, I'm about to uh, say good night. Um, I'm, I'm very grateful to have everybody here that who, who showed up. Um, just gonna realize that the eyes needed some color. Um, and I, I at some point I'm just gonna have to get like a better high resolution camera because I realize I can't see that much um, here. I feel like it does look a little better in person, but but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's my ego speaking. I don't know. Uh, I'm a fan of comic tropes. Thank you, Austin. I wish he would make more challenging content. Um, more challenging. Well, I don't know. Um, you know, I try every once in a while. Hard to. I'm, I'm trying to keep to a weekly basis though, so that's really hard to to do. How does this relate to swing? My idea was that she's swinging these swords. She's spinning around swinging them. I didn't add motion lines, so maybe that's not the clearest. Something to think about for the future. Uh, Horror-themed one for pattern, Uzumaki. That's a really good, that's a really cool idea. Um, but anyway, um, try to do comic tropes blindfolded. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll give that some thought. Is she holding a kukuri? kukri? Yes, 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 yes. It might be backwards. I spun it around. Yeah, I, I don't know. I was just coming up with something fun. Um, anyway, I think that that'll do it for tonight. I need to get some water and some sleep. But thank you, everybody. Uh, you guys were fantastic. 
Uh, until I see you next time, which hopefully is tomorrow, uh, keep reading comics. Take care.